Hello everyone, welcome to this weekly update video for the 29th of August and we'll get straight into it. This is mainly going to focus on TFM um, to talk about what's been going on with the builds over the last week. We are now on preview 22 9.1 that you can go and download. A reminder that these are preview builds so I will stress that you can install them alongside your um, release build and uh, you know I'd, I'd probably recommend to use these more for test flights um, if the test flight goes well with your specific aircraft and configuration you, you can obviously take it out but I wouldn't uh, you know say I'm going to pull a VAT sim flight on this immediately and uh, you know such and such thing isn't working um, so yeah we had uh, the new preview build out the point one is courtesy of a small update to fix a bug but let me just go through what was talked about and if you want to see a full list it's on the release page of tfm within the release notes there isn't yet a blog post about this but uh, i'm sure there will be relatively soon the timing of me filming these videos and the time difference with the us often means that there is uh, a uh, you know a blog post that comes out later on in the day after i film the video in the morning here in the UK time. So uh, he does stress, this is uh, the release notes, which I assume are written by Andy, uh, the TFM developer, one of them. Um, the, um, the, uh, the, the reports are much appreciated. Um, since this is a preview build, of course, there will be issues. The first thing that we'll talk about is that you can now not use SAPI on the ILS. So if you want to send your ILS readings to NVDA or speech, screen read or whatever, you can do that. Um, personally, uh, I like having it on SAPI because uh, I know that that's the ILS and it's just separate when I have a lot going through the screen reader already on the approach. But if you want to send it through your screen reader, you can now do that. Um, the overhead panels of the 737, of course, we knew about. Um, the aft overhead, some of my favourite highlights from this. You've got the dome lights panel, you've got the ADIRU panel, and you've got the uh, gear panel where you can see more info on your landing gear. So uh, there's a there's more things to all of these panels, but I've just picked out a few of my you know specific favourites that are kind of interesting. Um, you can see, as I say, the full list on the releases page. The forward overhead, you've got the fuel panel, you've got the electrical and APU, and you've got the wipers panel. The center overhead, you've got the anti-ice, um, and uh, you've also got the aft overhead. So you can look at all the various panels on those, as well as the hotkeys, which are listed in uh, previous week's blog posts as well. The uh, speech settings for the panels are all available. So you've got to remember with this comes more offsets. So certain things may read twice. For example, these listed here, the parking brake. So certain offsets may be listed twice, may read twice. And out of the box, you're probably going to get in the 737 a lot more stuff reading out. So it's important you go and fine tune this to make sure that everything isn't reading automatically. There's a lot of superfluous stuff here that whilst being cool is not in any way essential for your usual A to B flight and things that you know pilots would normally just skim their eyes across maybe would only really pay attention to if the light turns on. Um, you know, they would just sort of skim it and be like, you know, it's like, yeah, that's turned on, that's normal or whatever. You you don't necessarily need NVDA or whatever screen reader you're using to read that out to you uh, all the time and, uh, you know, add to the already uh, relatively verbose situation. So it's important you fine tune that. Uh, the other thing is Control Shift X was added as a shortcut to restart TFM. That's quite useful. So if you need to restart it for whatever reason, uh, something isn't working, you can just hit Control shift x The glide slope has been switched around so that the glide slope shows us if it's saying above, that means the glide slope is above you and vice versa. Um, this is, you know, just a topic for debate um, that, you know, it's it's been a really difficult one, I think, you know, whether you want the glide slope to be showing as above you or whether above means you are above the glide, you know, what position should it be relative to? Um, so I guess it's been changed around in this preview build. Um, so users can report whether they like that, whether they don't like it or whatever. Um, 
we'll see about that. Um, the, uh, the, the bulb report that links to that is also just letting you know that uh, ILS readouts may not happen when approach mode goes off or the approach light goes off, I should say. So this is already a known thing that basically when the approach light goes off, um, when you intercept the glide slope, the uh, uh, glide slope readings will sometimes stop. Um, so that, that still exists, that, that bug still exists. And uh, it's relatively annoying because you don't know where you're at. You want to make sure you're still on the glide, but uh, that, that isn't new, it's still there. Um, there is also reports here that the ILS on the 747 may have some readout issues. I've heard unconfirmed reports from a couple of people who've used this saying that they're also having ILS readouts read out decimals, um, as well as just the regular info, um, the decimal places. So again, um, I haven't confirmed that myself, but if it is a bug, I'm sure people will be reporting it, but just be advised. That's why I'm saying this is a preview build, so um, best to install it alongside your main build so that you can keep the main one around that's actually working for you. Um, there's some important notes on FS2020, of course, here. It talks about the PMDG73 not having the full SDK released, so it won't work with the 737-700 or indeed 600 or indeed 800, which have all now been released by PMDG for 2020 um, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So um, don't expect that to work again. We already knew that, but just to stress it in here. And... Uh, some other notes about instrumentation not working yet in 2020 Microsoft Flight Simulator because uh, TFM doesn't support it. When it comes to Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, courtesy of Josh or Orings reporting via Twitter that in the latest Sim Update 10 build, Microsoft broke the keyboard access that they had for the main menu as of the two previous builds. So that is now not working. Hopefully that gets fixed before the Sim Update 10 released. Am I surprised? No. Um, do I think it'll get fixed before Sim Update 10? Probably not. Uh, who knows? Uh, we will have to see. Um, honestly, it's really not, I think, a focus at the moment. Um, ultimately, still very disappointed in Sobo that we are nowhere further forward. When it comes to accessibility, um, it looks like Microsoft Flight Simulator has fixed their server uh, CTD issues. As I said, the 737-800 from PMBG has come out, so everyone's been really excited about that, flying it around. Uh, but yeah, uh, it looks like they've broken the, uh, to be honest, pretty pitiful level of accessibility that was in the previous two Sim Update 10 builds already. So uh, yeah, really disappointed with that, but uh, not surprised. Um, I also want to confirm, again, courtesy of Josh, uh, from receiving an email from the first officer de a developer in a, a conversation that he was having with him, that first officer pro for P3D will still be available uh, via PayPal. Um, there was some concern about the removal of it from Sim Market that, you know, oh my God, we're going to lose first officer. Uh, how are we going to fly some of these airplanes? Blah, blah, blah. Well... Your keys, as I said in the last video, will still work. And if you are a new pilot and you still want to buy your first officer key, you can go and get one. You just have to send the funds via PayPal and he will generate a key. Um, there's no concern over legitimacy. The, the first officer developer is, is a legit guy and will, uh, will provide you with a key. Um, PayPal has always been a first officer option, actually, um, to purchase your key. Um, and you actually get a 20% discount over SIM market if you purchased it via PayPal. So that option is still there. And uh, really, so there, nothing has, has changed in terms of first officer. Um, that is going to do it. I want to remind people uh, that for uh, the Cross the Land is on Saturday the 3rd. Um, I have a slot, so that will be fun. Uh, the BVI event yesterday was also fun from... Uh, for Lauderdale to Havana down to San Juan and I also just want to remind people um, about the the usual vaccine procedures um, you know controllers are here to help us and uh, you know if you have a problem with a controller there is a pretty set procedure to follow 
Um, you know, controllers should not be refusing pilots clearance to reposition. If they are, then that is totally on them. Uh, as long as you as a pilot are following all the usual procedures, then that's that's really on them. Um, you know, you can private message a controller with a copy of your remarks and say, look, this is the situation. We're happy to wait for when it's our turn, but you kind of have to accommodate this. If they're still not doing it, then you can use the dot wallop command, um, W-A-L-L-O-P. And you can call a supervisor and simply say, this controller is not helping here, uh, despite me letting them know the situation. Please, could you speak with them? And the VATSIM supervisor should be more than happy to do so. And then you can get out of the airport. Um, I have to say, I haven't experienced a controller not allowing me to reposition for a long, long time. But unfortunately, there's always the odd bad apple within the barrel, as uh, as with every every area of life so um you know if you are a blind pilot then there's no need to panic it is totally um on the controllers to allow us to do this to be courteous as the code of conduct states and uh sometimes it takes time you know and then there's a difference between a controller saying just hold on whilst we sort the traffic out and then we'll let you reposition between you know and them saying no you're not repositioning at all um, and sometimes, you know, controllers get a little bit over uh, over the top there. They might be new to it and they've gone through all their training and they've got their shiny S1 badge or something. Um, and they're, they are a little bit uh, excited and uh, don't know about blind pilots. So if that ever happens, a quick dot wallop should uh, get them uh, all clued in about blind pilots from a supervisor if necessary, if they won't listen to you as a pilot, which they should, but there you go. Um, so I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you on Cross the Land. I know BVI uh, is doing it with a certain uh, routing and uh, I'm sure there'll be some other blind pilots out there doing it, whether you're part of BVI or not. So uh, enjoy that and I will see you in the next video.